allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for coming, everyone, tonight, board members and public. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, get a motion to approve the minutes from September 9th, 2019, our regular meeting. So moved. I have a motion from Bob. Is second. second. John, second. Any discussion, corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Need a motion for September 23rd, 2019, regular meeting minutes to approve that. Motion from Bob. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Lynn. Any discussion or corrections? Lucia. Well, I have a proposed correction. I had mentioned earlier to Lisa uh, under C, capital plan, uh, there's just a typo on the sentence mid paragraph. Lucia Ziobro asked if the fire marshal assessed the curtains. Access. So she wrote access, but it should be assessed. A S S E S S E D. Okay. The spelling is wrong. And then the wooden landscape ties around the perimeter. Then the next sentence Newgate assessed the same problem. Access away. So I think it should be assessed twice. So Seems rather than A C C, it should be A S S. Very good. Any other yeah. grammar? People that win. No. <laughs> we'll blame it on autocorrect. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, need another motion <coughs> for regular meeting September 25th. Motion approved. Okay, John made the motion. Have a second? Second. Lucia with a second. Discussion or corrections? Comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Um, I was going to abstain because not having been there. Okay. Abstentions? I guess I should abstain too. Huh? <laughs> I was to be there. Okay, two abstentions. Motion carried three to two. And I do understand that even if we're not at a meeting, mm -hmm. I guess if we read the minutes and looked at, I guess, a TV, we can still accept them. Because I guess we could run into a problem where we wouldn't have a quorum to accept it if. A yeah. number of us missed it. Yeah, especially if it's like a this tiny was one. Yeah. Executive yeah. meeting, so yeah. Yeah. it wasn't too much. Oh, was that the six, there. eight minute meeting we had? Okay. <laughs> and I need a motion to accept the minutes, uh, September 30th, special meetings. I just have a comment on um, how we record people's statements in these minutes. Like, it's not always clear that we're quoting, the person is being quoted. It's almost set forth in here like it's a fact. And I'm spe speaking specifically a paragraph, Roman 2. Um, uh, I hope I don't pronounce his name wrong. Mr. Calabra, Bob, excuse me, reviewed the 2015 efficacy study and found it to be inaccurate and biased. So I guess that's his opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but I th saw some things in here that I didn't necessarily think it was clear whether it was his, his opinion or he was quoting from a report or not. So I just wanted to. Um, bring that up. And then also, you know, people brought information to this meeting, and I'm not entirely sure that we're, we're sure that that information was correct. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe if, you know, if, when we quote people as saying, this is the cost in Granby, this is the cost in East Granby, it should be something like it was presented by X, Y, and Z that this was the cost in Granby, this was the cost in East Granby. So just so it looks like these aren't necessarily facts that we agree with, because we haven't had a ch chance to double check them. Those yeah. are very good points. Actually, yeah. some people have told us that our minutes are just too complete. They really should be yeah. what, what we're doing business-wise, how the votes go, who voted what way. Because right. when you start getting into everyone's comments, right. then it gets long. And we are televised now, so we at least right. have a videotape record. But you're right, because certainly Lisa does an outstanding job. I know some, someone yes, asked me, they said, I don't know how she could keep up with it. But I know other boards have commented to us about our, our minutes mm -hmm. and that they're sometimes very detailed. And then somebody will say, well, they're not detailed. If you're very detailed, then you, should have, then you should have everything. And then we don't. Right. So that's a good point. And maybe that's something with CAVE we can look at and 
get more of a direction okay. with now that we're putting everything on TV because those are all good points. Okay. okay, well, we should have discussed that after I had a motion and a second. I okay. should have had a discussion, but there's a motion to accept it. Do we have a motion and a second? Second. Bob, the second. Okay, any other discussion? Uh, I, like, I like the way the reports are done. So I like them that way. I like them that way, too. But it's hard for Lisa. To I don't mind perfect. the detail, don't get me wrong. But I think we should quote people when they're being okay. quoted and not necessarily set it forth as if it's a fact. And I'd be happy to work with you on that, Lisa. So Yeah, because you're right, because right. we have no clue if it's factual information or not. Right. I mean a lot of people brought information to that meeting. Yeah. It just wasn't Paul. And so we don't without double checking it, we don't know whether it's factual or not. So right. it shouldn't be set forth as such. Okay. Well so. I think it pretty clearly states that. This individual stated that. But it's not in right. It's right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Just an attorney I'm a little concerned right. about things like that. Anyone else? Okay, all those in favor of accepting September 30th <coughs> minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Okay, any additions to the agenda? John. Um, we haven't really discussed the end of year financials because I know that the, I know we discussed them in the past, but we never got up. Joanne's going to bring final. that up tonight and give us an update on that. Okay, so that will be done later on. During the, the financials, yes. Then I'd like to make another motion or Complex changes to the agenda. Can we do Joanne first so she doesn't have to stick around? And I love that idea. Oh, good idea. Thank that's you, that's John. a good idea, John. It's a very good I idea. I know she has a long drive. So. Yeah. Thank you. And we've been tying her up. Good so idea. So do I need to make a motion for that? Or? No, I'll do it. I'll okay. do it. I'll certainly do it. Agreed with you. Any other additions to the agenda? Okay, then I'll just accept comments from visitors before we make that change. Any comments from visitors? Okay. Do you want to do student representative so we can let them go? Or what, to join They'll probably want to stay for the duration. So <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, right. well then we'll let you. She has a long ride to uh, Milford back. So, so if we can go to committee reports, I guess we'll let her, let's see, under, no, not under budget. We're going to do it, yeah, we're going to do it under budget. And then we have oh. to approve the September financials. Am I right? No. Um, where do you want me to do it? Yeah. Under recommended actions? Okay. Just go under, uh, yeah. see. under 6A, approve September financials, and she'll give an update on the end of the year. Stuff, John? Sure, that's okay, John. Like the only time when it's presented. Yeah. So. Let's go down to 6. We'll do 6A first, approve September financial report. But before we do that, why don't you bring us up to speed on the end of the year? Okay. Uh, we've been working on um, uh, seven months completing all of the open purchase orders that we had at the end of uh, June 30th. And, and as of right now, we have about $48,000 in OP purchase orders that are still open. We might not have a packing slip. We might not have everything we need to match to make sure that everything has been received, that it's been billed correctly, and then paid. So there's a $48,000 roughly left. Um, after that, though, there's, there is a, a balance of $125,000, roughly. So That would be after the payment of the $48,000? Yes, if it, if it would all be paid. I mean, we still might find some purchase orders that uh, a vendor couldn't provide the materials, so we would, at this point, we will close that purchase order and um, um, cancel anything else that might be open with the vendor so they don't ship it later. Uh, and we wouldn't have that responsibility to pay. So uh, that's where we stand right now as far as the, the, the balance that's left from last year. Now, now how does that compare to the town side? Well, we're, we're still working on the reconciliation. Um, uh, we were reconciled through May, uh, but we're uh, right now we're about $30,000 difference okay. um, that we're still working on. Uh, just working with Ray, as a matter of fact, today to, okay. to go through it. And um, I'm meeting with Kelly on Thursday at 2 okay. to um, go over some of the things that I think might not have been posted on her end and then double checking things that we might not have been posted on our end. So yeah, we're, we're closer. <laughs> the reason why I asked is I was at the last Board of Finance meeting and they showed us about 200000 in the red. Right. And we showed about 100 some odd thousand. To the good. Yeah. And we resolved that. Um, it was uh, and after an adjustment that had to be credited to our expenses for insurance. 
So. And after her meeting Thursday, if we can't get this closed, we're going to have to bring in some help because we only have Joanne a couple of days a week. Ray doesn't start till November. Right. He's coming in one day a week, and we need to have this thing fixed. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll bring in some more help and mm -hmm. get it done. At least we're in the ballpark now. We're getting closer, getting yeah. resolved. Okay, it's been great working with Kelly. She's been very good. Mm -hmm. And Rosalie as well. Been very good. So that's uh, from last year. Now you received the um, current financials, and I've made some notes. Um, that I had said to you about um, payroll encumbrancing. So we now have that at least in the two main categories, uh, certified personnel, the 111 and the 112. And we'll continue, uh, we, we usually check, we'll check it you know, every month to make sure that we have, sometimes there are glitches in the program that you have to check and, and correct. So we will keep monitoring that every month to see how we're doing with that. Uh, all the encumbrances are now in for the health insurance for, through the end of the year. Um, and professional and technical services. We've encumbered quite a, uh, quite a bit of, not everything, but quite a bit of uh, what we would have for the whole year. Now, and the tuition accounts, you see the 561 account, those encumbrances are for special ed right now only. Uh, the additional encumbrances will be added when we get the, the bills um, or some indication of how much we will have to pay for BOAG to other magnet schools and Cheney Tech and Ms. Nuntuck. Uh, now the private school tuition for special outplaced special education, you'll see that right now we project that we will be in excess of the budgeted amount, and it was by about $12,000, mm -hmm. almost $13,000. Uh, any additional placements that come up, come through the year will cause us to be in, an increase in the account and a, a larger deficit. I just wanted to make you aware of that, where we, where we are right now. Mm -hmm. One other line item, natural gas, that looks like it's going over also. It could, and we encumbered for what we thought might be the maximum compared to last year. Okay. If we have a better year, I mean, if we have a warmer season. Okay. So that, that'll, that'll change during the year. We probably won't know really until March, April, after the season is over, but that was the best projection that we could do by now. And I also see a few small transfers, minus 400. And yes. Plus 270, 130 were those. Those were in between one school that didn't have enough money in their, uh, in their supply account. We moved from their textbook account and their, uh, to cover some of the um, licenses. So we've just moved for that one school so far for purchase orders that we put through. Any other questions? Anyone else? Nothing Hey, can I get a motion then to approve the September 2019 financial report? So moved. Mm -hmm. Have a second? I'll second. John second. Okay. Any discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? Okay, motion carried. Joanne, you can go home. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for coming and thank you for helping us out with everything you've been doing for us. Okay, now we'll go back to Roman numeral two, student representatives report. And Missy, you have an introduction for us? I well, I'm going to turn over. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, okay. although I'm pretty amazed because the fact that you're sitting here tells me that you're seniors. Yeah. And I'm yes, not sure how that are. happens all the time. I tend to lose track. So, um, so I will give uh, first names and then if you would like to just introduce yourselves a little bit more to the board. Okay, so we have Cordy and we have Izzy. Oh, there I'll start. Hi, my name is Isabel. I'm obviously a senior this year. Um, 
involved in like a lot of things, soccer, student council, FBLA, things like that. Um, yeah. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> um, Gordon Hartman, uh, I'm involved in a lot in the school. I mean, I'm a cross country captain, I'm going to be golf captain this year. I talk to almost every teacher, I know what's going on, and I'm really involved in the community. Uh, I just kind of, mm -hmm. I like the school and I like, you know, talking about the grades. And I think this year's actually been pretty well, like, yeah. formed and everything, and I keep starting the year very well. Um, with all the sports that's going on, uh, like almost, I want to say two thirds through the season, it's pretty good. And I think that everything we do as like a student body is, you know, well informed and I really mm -hmm. appreciate this year. Yeah, and there's also a lot of volunteering opportunities um, compared to this year and last year. Like I know um, Future Business Leaders of America and student councils really um, just going for it. And right now we're doing a breast cancer awareness thing, you know, selling bracelets, doing donut days, um, hat days, sock days, anything that'll really um, go great towards the cause. So. Very good. Well, we welcome you and you. glad to see you're interested in the school and school board is a good place if you're interested in community helping out. Glad to have you. Thank you. And especially giving us some input about what's going on in the schools. Welcome. Thank you. Did you have more than you want to share? Um, yeah. We have kind of uh, broad topics to cover. Um, a lot of things like I want to talk about are like the events we've had have been very successful in the past, I want to say month, the last couple of weeks have been very good. Uh, the National Honor Society had some pretty good bake sales. Um, it's kind of low amount, but it's a lot. It's like 200, 300% more than what we've earned before. And uh, coming up with um, like the Spanish, we had a Spanish Heritage Month at the school. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of like well informed and today it's like the last day of it. And they had like mm -hmm. a kind of dance in the comments. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, coming up, we have Soccer Under the Lights. Uh, Pepper Eye and Bonfire and all kind of happening in the same the, two days. Yeah, the Bonfire Bonfire and Pep Rally are the same night and then Soccer and the Lights is the day after. And these events like it's the yeah. biggest we have in the school, like Under the Lights is a yeah. huge event and mm -hmm. everyone comes. It's a great time. Mm -hmm. Um good food. Very good food. <laughs> good hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> um but like the Pep Rally and Under the and uh, uh Bonfire I think is a really good idea for what we're doing because usually we've had pep rallies in the past during school hours mm -hmm. and a lot of students they you know get out of class ten minutes and you know they all come together for sports. But I think if we like we have it with Bonfire, mm -hmm. a lot of, I think a lot of people are excited for it because it's I like agree. one big hangout for the school and you know, everyone gets together and we, you know, just celebrate each other doing Exactly. Introduce like the sports athletes and things like that. It's gonna be a really good time. So. Yeah. yeah. And what what's the date of that? That is next Friday. Next no, next Thursday. Next Friday. Thursday. Next Thursday's yeah. Bonfire. Next Thursday's bonfire. Next, next Friday mm -hmm. is Unvoids. Mm -hmm. Hope you have good weather. Good good go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's it from us. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's a great first report. Glad to hear Thank it. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Right. Okay. Can, we just, can I stop a picture of you too? Yes. Of course. Great question. <laughs> Get it from the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With Mr. Pitney too. No. <laughs> I'm not a high schooler. smile. <laughs> Mr. Pitney, would you be okay in a photo with them? I would love to. <laughs> it's your senior year, right? Yeah. Let me get a little closer. <laughs> yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And the two of you are welcome to stay for as long as you'd like, uh, but you would not be rude if you uh, did not stay. So it's totally up to you. A lot of work. Yeah. Okay. I guess, yeah, I kind of have a lot to do, yeah. too. <laughs> Essays, you know, like applying for college. Although, very interesting listening to you all. Definitely a good time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I'm, like, really hot, but it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Well, if you want, next time we can put you later in the agenda so you get to hear more. <laughs> okay. okay, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right, thank Thanks you for coming. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Under Roman numeral three, under Chairman's Report, we'll look at the capital plan update. Uh, you should have copies of that in your packet, I hope. Let's see. You want to discuss? You want to go by year by year? Or how do you want to do this, Miss? Um, 
So on the five-year plan, okay, that, those are the additions that were approved for, for additions into this um, draft plan um, at our last board meeting. So uh, we are still in the draft stages. Um, I think I shared last um, meeting that I was having some conversations with some with the principals and seeing what else you know might be um, something that we can add to the capital plan. Um, I know in we also talked about the reoccurring purchases for technology that might be better served in our operating budget. So that's certainly a question and, and um, you know a conversation we will need to have. Um, we have had the sixty thousand allocated through capital funds for the last um, you know at least. As long as I can remember. Several years, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we are looking at uh, perhaps, you know, more one-time purchases. So, for example, with technology, uh, right now we are in the need to replace Seymour School Camera, the server system. Uh, there is a quote from Three-Way. Three-Way uh, Communications is who we use for all of our other schools. Um, Seymour School is the only school that is not on our current system that serves the rest of our buildings. Um, and what happened is, in the late spring, there was an issue, and through troubleshooting, our IT, um, in trying to make contact with someone to service um, the system, there is nobody that they're able to find to service that system. It's an older uh, system. It's an older Honeywell. So we're looking to move to the, um, I want to say Vigilant, I hope I pronounced that correctly, which is the system we have in um, all the other buildings. Um, I'm so, sorry, the security at Seymour was not overhauled when they overhauled the building. I was just yeah. the same thing. I, well, uh, yeah. I can tell you what I've been told, but having, I don't have the actual support for it. Um, it was, but my understanding is it might have been a building committee decision versus kind of the school. So I don't know if it was done in okay. a separate. I and don't I, have the answer to that. Okay, I get you. Um, it is a question I asked. Right. Could have been one thing. So, well, it might have just been overlooked because maybe at the time it wasn't necessarily at its effective life. And <clears throat> and you know the the yeah. systems have changed. Like right how long now. Has it been now since the. Uh, 2012. 2012. Yeah. It was it was before and, Sandy Hook so too. So, so it's, yeah. Well, just mm -hmm. that would that would be my guess. If, yeah. And like I can tell you right now, there's certain, without saying too much, we have access to systems. Um, that's kind of a gap right now. Yeah. So, um, so we are looking to get it um, into the same server and system that we have in uh, the three other buildings. And this is the estimate right here? Um, yes. Yep. That that's seems pretty reasonable. So that's the estimate. Now, is this something that... You might be able to get through security grants through the state? So, John, that's a good question. There's a lot, um, I was doing a lot of research with security grants. There's a couple out there. The issue is there's no guarantee with any of the security grants. It looks like they come out in the spring. I actually spoke to the State Department of Education, also a, a national, um, you know, grant also. Um, so, the answer is, if we can, that would be fantastic. Um, but I think we need to plan for some of these um, needs if we don't get that grant. And whether or not we get the money, we'll have to do it anyway. Right? Yes. Well, that's a that's a primary because after January, it will no longer be su uh, supported with updates. So that's something we are going to have to figure out whether it's through one of our other grants or another way to update uh, that particular server. And again, this isn't something that was realized until late spring when an issue came up with some troubleshooting that it was no longer being serviced. Um, but it's still fully functioning, just that after January they won't upgrade it. It's update. fully functioning. Um, At the school. Yes, most of the time. It, it, is, it, is, it tends to go down. So it's on its last legs, basically. Yes. Right, and it could go down altogether and there would be no service after January 1st, correct? I'm sorry, Lennon. So it could go down altogether and there would be no service for it after January 1st. Well, right. So after January 1st, it won't be, none of the updates will be supported anyway. So mm -hmm. we have a, a few months that we are, um, you know, working. 
Um, some of the other um, items I look at with technology, again, would be the projection, si projection system for All Grove School, for the gym to allow the um, school to do all school or parent programming. Um, again, I see that as a kind of a one-time purchase with a decent lifespan. Uh, we are researching some systems and costs for that right now. Um, under school safety, John, to your point, there's a number of items that may or may not be. Um, I will tell you, when I spoke to somebody regarding one of the grants, they said if you were awarded a grant once, your likelihood of getting it a second time has diminished, and if you are not a high needs or a high risk district, it diminishes again. Mm -hmm. um, but I am looking at additional opportunities as well for um, other you know funding sources for some of our school security um, but we are looking for some window treatments uh, radios uh, there's a number of um, uh, rooms at all Grove school that does not have um, access with the fob system and looking at also a locking gate if you, um, if you can kind of visualize the middle school gym, it's an area that we frequently rent out for um, town usage. Um, but once you have access to the gym, you have access to the entire building. So we'd like to put a locking gate um, just outside the bathroom so that if you are renting that space, you have access to the bathrooms, but um, that would be as far as you'd be able to go. Um, we did check it with uh, the fire marshal, and it, it's something we absolutely are able to do. Um, that in itself certainly would not hit the $5,000 threshold. It's kind of a combination of you know, these items. Um, also, there's a quote in here from ProFilm. Um, looking at Seymour School, there's a lot of windows. Um, so you have a lot of visibility into the space, which is not um, a best practice. The film would allow to see out, but not to see in. Um, so we do have that quote. Um, also down at the bottom, I'm gonna move it up, uh, blinds at the top of the All Grove Gym. And that's really more for um, the sun glare. It gets, it gets really hot and uh, bright in that space. Um, looking at uh, facilities and grounds, Again, looking at um, having a kind of a reoccurring maintenance fund should we need it. Looking at um, a composite decking cap for the All Grove play area. This is behind All Grove School. There is a quote for New Haven in your packet for that. Um, EPW has said that they would help with some aspects of that, but we would still need New Gate uh, for the top uh, cap area. Um, and again, that's, that's under $1,500 for that quote. Looking to extend the blacktop at Seymour School for outdoor play. Uh, last board meeting, again, we talked about removal of the trees outside of the middle school and high school commons, uh, where the picnic tables are located, and perhaps to add some shade sails so that the children, when they're outside eating, do have some shade. Um, and that might be something we can work with our tech department to do some construction um, and to provide some coverage in that area. And again, to upkeep the maintenance of courts and fields. Yes, John? I'm sorry, I'll, I, when you're done with your, you're going. Do you want to do it now, is that easier? Sure, before, because I do forget that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm backing up to um, the safety and just take randomly the uh, middle school having a locking gate. And I can attest to that, having frequented the middle school gym over the years, it's crazy. You know, I mean, we open it, you know, if someone's renting or mm -hmm. is in a park and recs event that's in the middle school, they've got access to the entire buildings, plural. Um, but what I was curious about is whether we could um, take a lot of what you've just thrown out at us, Missy, these, some of the uh, safety issues and some of the um, facilities and grounds and call them also safety issues. And I don't know if there's an appropriate um, line item in operating, but I would almost think that a lot of what you just covered, the last maybe three or four items that mm -hmm. you covered, and maybe even some of the other items that you covered, might be better served of us, you know, instead of thinking of it in terms of capital, 
um, either finding a line item that fits or creating a line item that fits related to buildings. I don't know, that would be maybe in the 400 series of having a, a line item that would be, um, call it building safety. You know, I, I don't want to say it's maintenance, but you could. But I, but I think that if we looked at it that way, instead of saying these are capital requests, I, I think that's more accurate. Um, much in the same way that when we talked last meeting about the technology. Chromebooks and technology. And, and John, how do you feel about that? I mean, if it, if it doesn't meet the threshold for capital, yeah, it should be part right. of the regular budget. It's almost like we should be thinking in those terms, though. Of, of, oh, yeah. It's not capital. It's, but I, I don't know if we have it in interoperate you know well where would we be look, where would we be looking in there in the 400 series I, mean, I see it as continuous no, maintenance contract. program right. you know for all of those areas okay i mean if it if, okay. if that's what it is repairs to buildings i mean we're as of now we're doing pretty good but right. it's still early repairs to buildings i'm just grounds. i'm just looking at it for you know next january february march mm -hmm. you know february when budget we're, time when we're looking at budget rather than Thinking, thinking capital on some of these things, you know, and I, right, especially if we're just talking things that are. I don't want to suggest that fifty or sixty thousand dollars is de minimis, but oh, it's not fifty or sixty thousand. Well, that's again the technology taking that, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever that number might be. Yeah, it's not, but I'm just saying, not the small dollar amounts. Yeah, it's. You know, we might have to beef up that line item a bit. Yeah, but, I, but I think I think we're better served looking at it that way than to look at, at right. some of these things as being um, capital. I wanted to put it out there as a discussion, yeah. and then you know your decision as to where it's uh, where it's best served. Um, it just seems like that continuous maintenance in a couple areas, again mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. is where kind of some of our gaps are. So we wait till it's like almost down okay. to nothing, then we're looking to kind of fix everything. Although you know? that Seymour thing certainly with the uh, security uh, stuff is not a recurring thing. It looks like it's going to be, Correct. If we, it would be something that we would, that would presumably last for a long time. The camera server you're yeah. speaking about, Bob? Yes. It meets the threshold. Right. Okay. okay. And can I just, one more comment, and that is, um, since our last meeting and our last discussion on capital, I went back over to Al Grove, and I was reminded of the fact that when there's a school production in there and the parents come, and the parking's all the way over at the post office, mm -hmm. and parking over here, and you put the parents and the students and the teachers and anybody else, and you put them into that gymnasium, and it's just awful. Um, it's, it's awful. Doesn't matter what time of the year. Doesn't matter what. You mean, you mean hot? Body it's heat. Awful. Yeah. yeah. Body heat. Open the windows. It's awful. But you can't. And why not? Well, I'm just saying it's awful. And I'm also going to just say that the, um, you know, for the last however many years, stage curtains has always been on our, our, um, um, five-year plan. It really needs to happen at some point in time. And you know, and if we can't find it by way of capital, then we need to find someone, you know, to make that happen somehow, some way. Um, that and again, the curtains. You know, if, if they talk about you know trying to do any kind of, um, I won't say film, but any kind of presentation in that space, that would you, you can't, you can't do during the uh, school day. You can't do any kind of projection. The light in there is crazy. Um, right. Curtains. I mean, if, if if air conditioning is not feasible, curtains should be because again, the the heat in that place when the sun's shining through, doesn't matter what time of year it is. I'm just talking about not stage curtains, but well, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking I'm talking the window lines, curtains. Yeah. But now I'm moving to stage curtains, and the stage curtains that are there, and the stage and the stage area and the backstage and that whole area is it's a, an embarrassment. Um, it's no different than it was the first time I ever visited Algrove School, which was in 2002. Um, it's just awful. How expensive are those? The curtains, the curtains, the, stage curtains. the curtains purportedly are thirty thousand dollars. I'm not even saying we need the curtains. I'm just saying that the whole, the whole 
gym slash, that is the auditorium for that school, and the condition of it is, it's deplorable. I mean, it really is. It hasn't had any love in a long time. It's had no love, and, and I'm serious. I, I think that it's exactly as it was when I first stepped into there, which was, again, back in 2002. And yeah, just, it amazes I just, me. Too. I just suggest, you know, I mean, if, if anybody has, anyone else on the board has a chance to ever, you know, to be in Algrove, just take a moment and walk down and go look at it. And Every time I go to the Boy Scouts, I see that curtain, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and, and I'm not saying they need to replace the curtain necessarily, but I'm just saying that, that the space needs some kind of attention. Who said love? It needs some love. So that's all. It certainly does. And not having a projection system anywhere in that school building, an elementary school, they, I don't know how you have a parent meeting, they can't put a PowerPoint up, they can't show a video. You know, I just think they really need something in there. But yeah. you're right, I agree with you. That whole gym area certainly could use some improvement. Yeah. And uh, John, we have had the windows open um, in, in the school. Like I know in the springtime we were there, it is still. I'm trying to think uh, Seymour, because I was in both gyms last spring, um, and both were very, very warm. Yeah. But at least when you're in the Seymour gym, you're not, you're not as embarrassed. You ever, no, Seymour gym is, is, I, I, is I find I find the Algrove gym to be an, an embarrassment. That's all. All right. I think that completes even if we, even some of the items that I wanted to share. To do some work there. All right. Um, I, go ahead. I had a question. Didn't, weren't we going to look into the duct cleaning to see how often it's needed and it wasn't as often if we had the uh, filters replaced? Well, that was so part of the other Thursday when we were the guy we can ask him about. I talk, actually asked Missy about that same topic. I, I thought I saw an email about that saying that it's not really required on that often. That may be what a feel that may be what, what it is. It's not required, but we wanted to get that from him first okay. Thursday and then certainly make changes. I looked at that and also haven't made the changes yet on it, John. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not required, we could bit. save money by changing those filters more often. Yeah. I mean it's part so of their contract contract to do it once or twice a year. Yeah. yeah. I, I sent that email out. Okay. So again, this plan that we're presenting the Board of Finance next week is not our final. But we're getting close to it, so uh, anything we want to add to it, you know, take recommendations where we'd like to put it? Well, the only one I, I can see that we absolutely have to is the uh, security camera. Put that in for this year and then put a note in there that, you know, still searching for grants, but put an actual placeholder. It's a high priority. Yeah. yeah. And pretty much everything else is small dollar items like the... Not stage curtains, but you know, blinds. The, and the blinds, the uh, safety film or reflective film and all that, that's probably handled within operating budget. Yeah. I agree with you. Repairs to blacktop, uh, yeah, even crack the, filling. Also that nature. So. And then with the Seymour replacement, I mean, it's fine that we're just looking at the one particular vendor that. Um, John, I did ask them to get a second quote. Um, it's just three three way does our other buildings right now, right. Um, but they are going to get a different quote. Okay. So I mean, who's going to get it? Not three way. But no, no, no. IT, our IT department. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just so we have it, just so we're not blindsided with that. Mm -hmm. So, so to fix the numbers for the board of finance, I don't know. Should we take a couple items out? To throw in that thirty-three thousand, or what? What was the dollar amount for the uh, thirty-eight? Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. 39. We don't really have a thirty-eight thousand thing that we can drop there. I mean, I do see a couple of air duct cleanings where if we find out, but that's only twenty thousand in this one fiscal year. Right. Pretty sure. So if we have the cost. Yeah, I would think, John, maybe we could pop those out. We we seem to have some evidence that we don't have to do it regularly. You want to pop them out this year and, right. and leave them in later on and we could always take them out later? Right. Yeah, we could, all, we could pop them all back. Unless later the on FNF says do the cleaning once, put the fresh filters in, and then you're good for yep. 10 years or who knows. I mean, we'll find out yeah. later. FNF just changed all the filters. 
Right. Oh, that's good. And, and that email that I sent, that came from Jason from FNF. So, right. okay. Okay. how about the cleaning? So maybe so, we can take out those two air duct cleaning. So that's this twenty thousand dollars, but we still need to find another eighteen thousand. And okay. either that, or we just add eighteen thousand and say, "Hey, that mm -hmm. just popped up." I mean, we don't even know if we're going with the middle school, high school gas conversion. That was just a placeholder at this right. point. Right. And probably at this rate, we may not. You know, we're certainly not get, going to get to that till spring or summer anyway. All right, that'll probably be next year. Next year's fiscal. Maybe. So we could move that over and the two air duct cleanings, and then that would that would give us the wiggle room to have that third. If we move that over, then yeah. it's possible we could be doing it in next September for the following year would work. Well, if you're doing a gas conversion, you have to do it in the off season. Right. right? But if they did a beginning of if they did it our fiscal year begins in July, so if they started after that summer, they can right. do that on next July year. July and August. That. Right. That's wasn't that part of the wasn't that part of the issue with we didn't have enough time. With the to guy that came in the pitch oh, right. was that we needed to do it and we needed to do it before school started. Right. And that they would need I thought it was like six weeks. I would just hate to move it tonight, John, before we go through okay. the walkthrough on Thursday. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to figure out where to put where to find thirty eight grand. Well we took out we took out 20. Okay. We're down 18. Uh, well, you just said the gas conversion is not going to happen to the summer, so can't you kick that into 2021? Why don't we move the gas conversion over to 2021? So that will really drop our, if you take those 120 out. That'll because be we have few requests in 20, and we only have 40,000 requests. That's our. This year we had 166. Well, now it's going to be 140. But we want to move the 100,000 to 2021. Mm -hmm. Yes, Let's sure. Do that. Are we going to good with that? Yeah. And then we'll put the 30. What's well, about 38, 8, so we'll 30, 39,000 for Seymour Technology. You want to call it that, or you want to call it Seymour Safety, or Seymour Safety 30. I was just rounding off to th it's thirty-eight thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars. So it's not confused with. Okay, so how about we, we call it yeah, safety and have its own line right under the air duct cleaning, and we can call it thirty-nine. Thirty-nine thousand. Yeah, I mean this may throw the uh, board of finances model completely out the window, but I'm not sure what their model was anyway. Just well, they would have been working off of what we last. They may or may not have been. I'm not sure. But yeah, it sure does smooth it out because we're at 226 this year and only 100,000 next year. So it'll it'll drop. Now things. we basically just swapped it. Yeah, swapped it out. Yeah. Okay, so 2021, we moved the gas conversion there. Anything else you want to add in could 2021? I, could I suggest if it's feasible? that um, we moved the 25 for the repairs to tennis courts from 21, uh, 2021 to 1920. I would agree with that, John, but reading a couple quotes here, we could end up being replacing tennis courts. And uh, we don't want to get in a situation where we have to replace them instead of repair We're them. Replacing them, we won't be doing that until... Mm. I know, because looking at a couple quotes here, one of the quotes recommended not doing the repair. Right. right? One gave. Correct. Yeah, so you know, I just don't know if we want to put that off because then we're going to be replacing instead of repairing. And actually, the second company recommended the first company, um, Hindu, with their, with their quotas. I'm sorry. Um, because their system of repair is different, um, and that's the $25,000 and the $1,800 upkeep annually. So they felt for 20, uh, 23, 276. I'm sorry, the Hending, yes, Hending? Yes. I'm familiar with Putnam. I'm not familiar with Hending, but anyway. So they're recommending cleaning, crack repair, netline crack repair, crack, um, low spots, peeling area, color line touch up. Right? And then the other one is. Yeah, so if you look at Putnam, Putnam says, I don't recommend doing the crack repair, and that's the um, $8,000. So their next option is a $200,000 yeah. rebuild. Right, with all weather tennis scores. Yeah, so my question was, why is one crack repair $8,000, 
you know, not okay, but hinding, it's still under crack repair for 25,000. So um, Joel Ziff, our AD, gave me um, kind of the explanation to that in terms of it's how, it's a different style of crack repair, and Bob, you might be familiar with the two. Um, yeah, but any of them, yeah, our winters are so tough here. Yes. We've been fixing cracks on those tennis courts, and certainly those low spots don't get any higher, and they've been deteriorating over the years. But the, yeah, the cracks just, well, Putnam's, them when they come back. Putnam's been doing our repair over the last however many years? I don't think last so. Last time that we had them do it? I don't recognize either of these names for doing tennis court work. Mm -hmm. Here these mm -hmm. At what point do we ask the, the town to, to be our tennis partner? Mm -hmm. Or do we just drop the tennis program and move on to something different? Well, it's not. But the thing is, they are the one and only tennis courts in our community. They're the only tennis courts. There were plans back when, um, when the uh, Veets Farm was purchased up on North Main Street. There were grand plans for soccer fields and additional uh, baseball fields, and there were plans for, you know, uh, community tennis courts. Um, I just think that, and I, I'm not big on tennis. Um, I can't serve with the darn. But it is not just the school program, which our school program is actually very good participation, and the young ladies have had moderate success. I think it, actually, I think they won the. They, they actually the, were the, close um, to winning, or did win no, I think the. They, did. Uh, the they were co and triple C champions last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, which I mean. I prefer. And and I I would I would make I'd be the first one to say, John, that yeah, two hundred thousand dollars to have a tennis program, but. It's not just the tennis program, and that's why I'm asking, you know, at what point, if we needed to truly rebuild tennis courts, what point is it not a Board of Education, um, East Granby Athletic Department concern, but also a town-wide concern? Well, there may be a shared service committee mm -hmm. discussion. You're right, by the time we get to that. Yeah. Uh, because now, certainly the tennis courts are used year-round by the community. Yeah. Uh, a small portion of the time, actually, the tennis season is only nine weeks long right. that the school uses it, and then the phys ed uses it during the same time. But Do right now, the right now we, we are the season. stewards of taking care of it. Yeah. It's coming from the same pot of money. Uh, you know, we we, we got to maintain it. Yeah. And so I know it does need maintenance. So do you suggest that we uh, not keep uh, pouring money into the, the cracks and, and, and do a, an uh, entire rebuild and get some. No, I would years think. I that. think we could repair it right now. I One don't more think time. We. I don't think any of us want to ask for two hundred thousand to rebuild them all. No. And I don't think we're in position to do that. No. Uh, is, is there anyone else that knows more about tennis courts? Maybe there's another one or two places we can get. There's, there I may be only one more. There aren't too many. There's not a lot. There, there aren't too many. Very specialized. Yeah. I don't know field. anything about tennis courts. Yeah. So. You know, John, we, when we're at the high school Thursday, we'll take a walk out there. I don't know how much worse they've gotten. Take a look at them. Okay. But hope, hopefully we can still repair them. And I think for the community, we should at least do that, and for the school. But I think uh, shared services need to discuss it, because I think down the line, oh, yeah. they're going to Well, I'll back off one. then on my idea of, of moving 25, because, you know, and just let it place sit there mm. for the 2021, and, you know. That's the ball bounce. But what I just in my head, I'm just thinking if you're going to take a hundred thousand dollar project and move it out of here, if there's something else that you can move in there just to sort of weight or balance the five year plan, it makes sense. That's all. Actually, I think that hundred thousand was kind of put in last time, so it's going to be a surprise to the board of finance this year or next year. I thought we had. Yeah, I think they I thought we'd that. introduced it. Yeah, that was in there. Yeah. I, think but I don't think it was built it. into their model. Well, I doubt it was because because didn't we hadn't we passed on it at that point? Right. I think we had. So, I mean, giving them more time probably work better in our favor than. Oh yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. We had that hundred thousand on our original one back in September. I just pulled the twenty-five from the tennis courts again, just to sort of balance things. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to say, how about pulling the thirty to 
you know, to refurbish the uh, the gymnasium um, at Algrove School. And again, just looking to if you're moving if you're moving a hundred out, why not move something in just to sort of offset it? That's all. Something to consider. Misty? I don't have a problem with that reasoning. Do we vote on that? Do you have a comment on that? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say yeah. No, no, I, mean, I know, but I'm just. I, would be, I mean, I, I guess it depends on really where we are with the gas conversion, and, and you know, if that's if we really don't think we're going to be looking at the hundred thousand this year. Um, I think we'll know much more Thursday. At least I hope we will on Thursday. We're having a meeting with FNF. Okay. That, I mean, that's coming up later. But if anybody else is interested, okay. Thursday mm -hmm. morning. Yeah, because there's nothing we can do with that. Even if we have to do the gas conversion, we can't do that now until after the heating season anyway. Right. So we really can then put it off to our next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're stuck now. If this thing fails now, we're calling an emergency uh, system in. But, uh, yep. And that's one of the reason why when we saw the grant from Eversource, you know, it's certainly worthwhile, worth looking into, and we certainly will continue pursuing it. But I, John, I would agree with you. But I would, I would also want to add to that number then some way for media to be used in the gymnasium for them to at least have a screen. I can't believe there's no screen in there. Right. We have smart boards, screens everywhere in the system. we got a whole elementary school. So they, they don't ever show a movie or a video. So, so or we need to have a, like so some not, kind of drop down screen with yeah, a projector. Yeah, with a projector. I'm not sure if we really ever had, and correct me if I'm wrong, Missy, or correct me if I'm wrong, Bob or John, um, but I don't think we ever really had where the 30 came from, whether that was the cost to replace, you know, state, the stage curtains, or whether that was just sort of a, kind of a number build up to do. More than that. More than that, and then maybe there's, you know, maybe there's less that can be done, but still get the same result, I don't know. Yeah, I agree, John, because we, um, we have not been able to find where we purchased those from the original curtains, right. so we're looking at where we've done. We purchased the middle school, high school curtains from, you know, right. to get a um, estimate mm -hmm. from them, and then a, you know another company. Yeah. And I, when I was when I was over there, I was making comment that could we find something that would combine the two, and, and the answer to that is not really. Yeah. That you yeah. do need actual curtains because they have production. I mean, at the middle school, high school, we have, um, you know, it just comes right down from the um, kind of the rafters. You have that releases down and back up. And we, I mean, we bring in a portable, you know, projector, right. you know, to do any display. Right. Comment on, as far as projection and stuff like that, that's technology. That, that could be part of the $60,000 line that we have in the top there, just reallocate it to. Well, if we're keeping that, are we keeping that or are we going to be? I really can't see the board. Board of Finance just handing us that, adding it into our right. minimum budget requirement. Right. Well, I I think they aren't they going to say it's one or the other. So do you right. want do you so, want to put it? Do you want to move it to your operating? Which I think well, we I don't think we'll ever get it because then it'll become part of the minimum operating budget, and then it's going to grow whatever percent year after year. Whereas whereas now we asked for it, and this is not something that the board us can go ahead and say, well, if we don't get a budget increase, we're going to go ahead and take away all the students' Chromebooks, which is going to be probably the first thing if the budget doesn't go up. So yeah, but I just don't the way to go it is. I still don't see the money, though, as being, capital as being capital. It's the way it's always been. No, I know, but well, it doesn't it, mean it is in two correct. senses. Yeah. And, and that okay. money <laughs> is used for smart boards and all sorts right. of projectors yeah. and things. It doesn't like that, have to so. be used for Chromebooks, in other words. It right. could be used for smart boards. Whatever's it could be used for whatever you need. We determine that we want to have a projection system in all grow. Well, there's your money. Let's try to reallocate the dollars so that that sixty thousand works. Yeah, if we don't, if we and it is that's that's certainly not all Chromebooks. Right. If we yeah. spend yeah. less than. 60 I'm on sorry, Chromebooks, then we'll have money left over for other sitting there as a, capital, as a capital item and you decide you want to put some kind of screen at Algrove, it doesn't meet the, the threshold, the purchase doesn't meet the threshold of what a capital item is. But it is if well, you combine all well, the technology. We, right, because we've always asked for 60000 They never 
explain to everyone exactly what the sixty thousand is used for. It's kind of a vague. It's like for Chrome, right? Which is this, which is not that. correct. It's not the way. I don't think it's the way we should be doing it. I remember when I presented a couple of years ago when I was chair, and I when I asked for the technology, I went through what it was that we were spending the money on. I think a lot of it was, if I remember correctly, Chromebooks. But I can't remember what the other one things were. But I, I did have a, a list of the, the things that I was presenting for, for uh, finance that night. We should be able to easily look it up. I mean, once the money is given to the school system, purchase orders are issued against that $60,000. So yeah, you could, could go back and but watch that film. That, that yeah. should be taken. I mean, that should easily be able to be taken care of by the 60000 I think so. I mean, it seems as though yeah. it's, it's a system that's working. I don't know that if, you know, because you, know, you never know whether the budget's going to pass, and if, if it doesn't pass, then it, we're going to start having to chop, and then, you know. Okay. Well, I mean, we can we could keep it up that way. It's fine with me, but at, at some point, I would think the Board of Finance would say this, isn't, this is not a capital item. But that's just my opinion on it, so. I don't want to not be asking for that kind of funding every year, John, so I don't care where we ask for it. We need, you know. No, I, I totally agree with you guys, but I don't think they're going to give us the $60,000 more in our operating budget to cover for it every year is the problem. Right. Probably, you, you, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. But that's what should happen. Yeah, that's what should happen, though. But you're right. Okay, so to close this out, we got to add the thirty-eight thousand. So, are we just moving that hundred thousand over and yes, we moved yeah. it over. Calling we did it to twenty twenty. Calling it a day or yes. So we've actually thrown in an extra thirty or thirty-nine thousand, or are we taking out the uh, duct cleaning, or are we going to leave them we in? We took until out we the duct cleaning for nineteen and twenty. We pushed them back a year, so we, we moved out one hundred and twenty all together, and we put in thirty-nine. Did we push them out of here? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're going to double up. We're going to have uh, thirty thousand for duct cleaning in twenty twenty one. No, I thought we. Or are we going to push everything one full year? I thought we just took out a nineteen twenty. We're going to leave it in twenty one twenty two if we need it. Right, but no, his that point is that it's we're pushing ten thousand dollars in the high school, ten in the middle school, and then we had budgeted for Seymour in twenty twenty one an additional ten. We could we could take that out. We could push Seymour out. Taking it one year down. Yeah. The point. Well, you took it out altogether. We didn't actually move it. Which one? Yeah. The Seymour one. The Seymour. The air duct cleaning for 1920. From what I'm hearing, we took it out altogether, not just moved right. it. Right. We took right. it out and left it in 2120. Yeah, we, we we moved it. Right. We didn't leave it out. We, we, we well, pushed we didn't it back move it. She's yeah. right. We had it in 2122, so we didn't move it. It's there in 20. Oh, well, the, the Seymour air duct cleaning. So Seymour. We'll push that back a year now, right? Does that make sense? No. No. No? We'll do them all in one year? No. No, no, because it's not. It's in 2021, and then the other two schools are in 21-22. Oh, well, yeah. How about oh, moving the air duct cleaning for Seymour over, and we could do them all in 21-22? Mm -hmm. We take the 10,000 from 20 to 21, move it to 21-22. If you're moving 100 into 2021, then everything you could possibly move out of there certainly would seem... Sounds like a good then I would move air duct cleaning to the next to twenty one twenty two. Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay, so we're just crossing off the two ten thousands in nineteen twenty and moving the ten thousand for Seymour over to twenty one twenty two. Yeah, correct. that's correct. And then we could cross out Seymour in twenty two twenty three and leave it twenty four twenty five. Want to do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, the rest, the rest of them, I think we should leave the way we have them until we find out on Thursday. Until we get closer to it. Okay. Okay. As to what, what they recommend for. Duck maintenance. Okay, sounds good. I would agree with that, but I think that if the decision is that the um, conversion should go over, then I think we should look to bring something yeah. into. We did, we just added 39,000. Something. <laughs> Something else. Something else. Oh, I mean, like uh, we could move up all grow yep. the, the stage like stuff. We could maybe move up all grow. Right. I would like to see us move that up. Okay, so, so we'll move that garden. from 22, 23 into. Well, and again, I don't, I don't really want to call it stage gardens as much as just some project to auditorium. Update the auditorium. Update the gymnasium. That's all. 
auditorium, some right. gymnasium upgrade, yeah. and that and way I, we can and, yeah, and I don't, cover whatever is yeah, necessary. I, I don't really know what all and how all, how much and whatever, and I think that to some extent maybe we're looking shared services. The weather's getting cold. The guys at Public Works like to work inside. They did a wonderful job in this room. You know, maybe they can do some wonders over there. Maybe it's the type of thing that, you know, keep uh, Eddie Hubbard's guys busy during uh, January, February, when they're not plowing. Well, it's slush. <laughs> it's not gonna snow this year, it's slush. How long can the tennis courts go without any kind of repair at all? I'm sorry, what was your question? How, how long can the tennis courts go without any kind of repair at all? Well, that's why I said, John, I want to look at them Thursday, because the last time yeah. I saw them, they I think we, were needed to repair that. I would hope they've been repaired in the past yeah, couple if years. If nothing else, we would want to at least do the crack filling. Yeah. Just to Which is the $8,100? Yeah, no, well, we had two. Right. You're going to have bubbles, I would have, before it was cracks, and they have to they get bubbles that pop up, and they've yeah. got to get rid of those bubbles and fill that in. It's more than just filling in cracks. Yeah. So the company that was used before, I just yeah. asked uh, the athletic director, um, Dalton. That's not Dalton, the they're the, that's the one. Um, they're the ones who put those tennis courts in years ago, Dalton. Um, and they didn't want to bid. Or I don't know why they didn't bid or they went um, asked, I don't know. There was several outreach to them, so Joel has been waiting for a call back. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think they'll be cheaper. It's just my experience with them. At one time, they were pretty much the only ones. Right. Now, I right. see there's some competition in the field. I'm just thinking we might have to build it into the budget somewhere. I mean, we could leave it next year, but I wasn't, like, to your point about moving stuff back. Is that something we could do sooner rather than later? I think it might get to the point, Lynn, where if we hold off any longer, it's going to only be able to do a full. The full, yeah. Um, so should we look to be moving some sum of money? from the 2021, 20, move it. To 1920. 1920. Well, that would be my recommendation if I, but I'd like to see it first. Okay. Well, John and I are gonna be looking at the, and he'll report later, we're gonna invite anyone who wants to look at the heating plants on Thursday morning. We can certainly walk by the tennis courts. Besides, I don't see us doing it before this winter, or do you think we have enough time to do it? No, you wouldn't want to do it before winter. Right. You want to do it right after the winter, because all your problems are going to be here in the winter. You know, that's what causes all the cracks. So you don't want to fix it now, because then it's going to be cracked in the spring. It's amazing what happens over So the it could be in this year's budget or next year's budget, because right. July 1st starts, you know, soon enough. But I think Missy's point was, and I don't know the condition, if it's, if it's not in good shape and we don't do anything this spring, we could be in a total replacement situation. We don't want to do that. How the, high school, the high school season is spring season. Spring isn't it? season, yeah. yeah. So that's why once the snow melts, actually the high school season is actually out there and sometimes there's snow on the courts. Mm -hmm. So you really don't see what the damage could be until the snow melts and there's not a lot of opportunity at that time. So we probably wouldn't be able to do much then either. A few board meetings ago, I shared this packet. This is the Hinding uh, proposal, and there are actual photos of our courts on the back of this. Um, I mean, it is easier. I mean, you know, sometimes the photos don't do it justice, but there were some photos attached to this this packet from a couple um, meetings ago. Are we like the before or the after? <laughs> before. The now. We're definitely the before. The now. Well, this is preliminary. We, if we go and John and I see them Thursday, they're a disaster. We come back to you and say we need to move it up yeah. for our final proposal. At least we've given the Board of Finance an update on it. And how much are we talking for a complete rebuild? A couple grand? A couple hundred grand? Yeah. So that's yeah. why we're tossing. Yeah. The repair sounds much better. And, and those things need regular maintenance. I'm not sure the last time they were maintained. They need regular maintenance. That's, that's you know, probably whenever you get something with frost action. Maybe get one more time because it's time to work with the town. And the town's done a good job. They've trimmed back those oak trees on the yep. tennis courts, which have caused a lot of the problems on the tennis courts. So that may improve it as well for, long, a little bit. for longevity. But we'll take a look at that Thursday. So getting back to this, so do we want to get anything, uh, move the curtains up? I suggest that we, we move that and then we just, we, instead of saying stage curtains, say auditorium enhancements okay. or improvements and just 
put in that 30000 because we don't know how much it'll cost. Yeah, but if we don't even know what it is, I really can't see putting a number on there until we have something detailed. I mean, if we have 30000 for curtains, let's just leave 30000 for curtains if that's what we're replacing. Okay. I don't disagree with that. I mean, I can't see going to the town saying we don't like the way the auditorium looks but it, and let's but throw I would, thirty grand at it. I wouldn't want to be limited, though, John, in, in that... You know, if we can, for $20,000, if we can do improvement to it to take care of more than just the curtain, but, you know, and, and not buy the $30,000 curtain, but rather buy. Yeah, but you can't some, tell a town you're spending 30000 on curtains well, that's and what, not have curtains. That's and why that's, you're on an auditorium and, upgrade. And that's, 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 why, why, I that's, I think that's, that's why I suggested a more generic. Yeah. Oh. yeah, but I thought the whole issue was that they were shredded and they were a hazard, so you have to replace them. They're not fire retardant, so yeah. Yeah, well, hazard. then yeah, that's a safe. They're no longer fire retardant. All of them are fire retardant. No, I was under the impression based no, on we talked. I remember talking okay. to the fire marshal. Or fire okay, man. well, he went and looked at the tags on all the schools. Then the project that should go is uh, um, just some sort of refurbishing. Okay, auditorium refurbishing. That would be curtains. That would be um, blinds. Blinds. No, not cur not stage curtains necessarily, but but blinds. Um, a screen, something that... There's no sense having curtains if there's not a screen projector. on the other side. I agree yeah. with you. you got to have a screen. That's, that doesn't cost that much. And it should be all done at the same time. Screen and a projector system. Mm, like this. That's not a big deal. I'm afraid the curtains are going to take up the major expense, but I think that number can, hold, can cover it because those curtains aren't as long as the high school ones are. It's a small yeah, stage. I don't, I don't know where they got the number. And I've never, I can't recall seeing anything that really said this is how much the curtains would cost. I think we should. Because it was always, always sort of sold as, a, as more of a project, not just the placement of the curtains. It's always been pitched that way that I recall. But I don't know. I think we should leave the 30000 because that's the number that's been going along and get better numbers. I agree with that. Okay. okay. Well, I agree with that. So we're going to put that in. 1920 mm -hmm. under auditorium upgrade. Okay. So you're not going to call it stage curtains? No, because some of us believe that it's going to be an upgrade. That I think we want more out of that, John. I think uh, I know you're the on these curtains. I think some of us want to see us upgrade. I just don't want to put a band of nice curtains up there and the rest of the place look shabby. If all it needs is a fresh coat of paint. Then well, it's back to my comment before, you know, if we can get Ed to do it, guys to come in in January I, I don't see why it should even be an issue for us. Just right. have them paint it. And for, that part, it. for that part of it, right. yeah. But there's but, also the need for a screen. Some, well, the screen we talked about right. in the, in the that technology could be in the equipment. Technology. Right, so we already have answers and places to put them. So I don't know why we're beating a dead horse here. You know, we have answers. We have DPW can do the painting. We have that a stage curtain because we were concerned about the wear and tear on it and how it was so old and, and original and had to be replaced. So why don't we just call it that and then you have avenues where you can put upgrades into the auditorium by either DPW or in technology. And, and that's your answer. You don't have to put additional money in there. You can't really speak for DPW doing it. No, of course not. Yeah, that's why I want to call it an upgrade. I, I don't want to take advantage of them and say we're going to cut some money here because DPW is going to do it. We can't expect that. That's why, like, I'm, I'm for 30000 auditorium upgrade and see what we can get out of it, see what maybe DPW can do from us. But uh, I think that's a realistic number. I'm not asking to increase it. So let's call it uh, upgrade slash curtain so that they know that the curtains are included in that. Okay. Okay. That works for me. That's good. Works for me. Auditorium upgrades. We're not going to ask for curtains two or three years down the road. Right. Right. Okay. This is it. Yeah. Okay. So we took that out of 22, 23. Yeah, and I'm just looking back at old five-year plans, like even for as of May 2018, it just had the thirty thousand dollar for stage curtains. Right. So was that another school? Bigger? It's probably what they cost. Or was that all school? growth? That was all growth. Oh, okay. yeah. They've been sitting on this for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It's been out there for a long time. Okay, are we done with 2021? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, 21, 22. 
We moved Seymour air duct cleaning of 10,000 there. We still have middle school and high school there, and, and we may be able to, after talking with FNF, you know, lower, get rid of those those dollars, we hope. Mm -hmm. We have a 32-5 for baseball, softball field irrigation. That's been pushed around since 2006. And we have 5,000 for parking lot repairs, multi-schools. Any changes, additions? I just got a comment, you know, we'll just keep an eye on the baseball, softball fields. I mean, they're in pretty decent shape. With all the fertilization, we may not really need irrigation. You, you know, so John, there's, there's some there, truth to that. And, and, there, there, but, yeah. and I've actually gone on record of, of stating how well the town has taken care of the fields recently, but mm -hmm. I did receive a phone call last week of somebody telling me that I said that and asked me to go look at the upper soccer field, which I did do, and it's in atrocious shape. It, it's not irrigated. So, so now uh, are we going to be irrigating the soccer field? No, 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 I'm not asking to irrigate it, but uh, I don't know if it's going to get a fall fertilization. But I, I you know, it, for the amount of use it gets from, again, the town. That thing gets abused. It should get a fall. Used, used and abused. But certainly from the town, which uses it all year long, again, we talk about shared services, but yeah. it's come from the same tax dollar. So I'm not too concerned who pays for it as long as we're maintaining it as a community. But that upper one, uh, isn't in great shape, and it's being used by our varsity programs. You know, I went over there the other day, and the person was right. I said that field doesn't look good. The other ones, you know, do look pretty, pretty the, decent. The ones that we had on the agenda for uh, irrigating look good, correct? Is that in soccer? No, that's on baseball. Baseball. Uh, they they don't look bad. The low, the lower softball field certainly uh, can look better, but I, I think we can get by without irrigating it. But I'd like to see what the price is because water is, there's water down there. There's right. water that was put in a pipe that goes right down to where the baseball and softball fields are. So to, to hook it up, it's not as big of a deal. It's not like you have to go searching. Somebody mentioned once, you know, they got to bring water down there. The water goes, goes down there. When they did a renovation years ago, they, they did propose that. So did the number come up back in 06? I don't know. It looks like it came up in 06. I mean, is that like a magic number that... Well, I'll tell you, for 32,000, you're not going to irrigate two fields with 32,000. The only person 000. that doesn't predate is Mr. Pitney. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were here in 06, Bill. Do you remember how much it was? Was it in the 1900s? <laughs> but you know it's more today, right, Bill? <laughs> it's going to be more today. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to do? I would just assume it's been kicked around since 2006. Is leave it there? Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah leave it back. And keep an eye on the fields. Yeah, and keep an and eye then, on them. And then the the rationales, I guess, always been that you wouldn't split it. You wouldn't say we'll do the softball and then we'll do the. You'd be in a Title Nine. Yeah, well, we could do the softball. Well, you can do softball. You can do that. Right. That's legal. That you can do, but you better not go the other way around. No, no, <laughs> I didn't say that. So you can discriminate one way, but not the other. That's right. Correct. You can. Wow. You can. Okay. Okay, anything else? 21, 22, trying to move on. 22, 23, we moved 30,000 for the auditorium upgrade slash curtains to 2019-20. So we took 30 out of there. We have air duct. a lean year. It's okay. The air duct cleaning, we said we're just gonna leave it there now until we find out for sure, right? Yeah. Okay, any other additions? That's Everything else is so far out that I don't think we have a crystal ball that far out, so. Yeah. I think we should leave the these these last couple of years leave leave them as is until we get a little closer. Don't you think? Right. Mm -hmm. Until we get a better handle on the facilities that we actually have, mm -hmm. you know, you can't just replace something just because it's old. It's got to be. No, but they out. they don't want us to give them any surprises right. though. Well, you could throw years. you could throw some. Uh, you could maybe up the parking lot repairs. You could probably, you know, anticipate that there's going to be. Well, if we're spending five thousand every single year maintaining them, I wouldn't think that they're going to deteriorate that fast. Whatever. Well, yep. Well, let me ask the board a question, and this may come under your unsure. Who's else on shared services? You and John's on it. Uh, Lucia. Just something to come up. I haven't talked to anyone yet, but on a five-year plan. 
for sharing things, you know, I talked to Missy about it tonight, would it be worthwhile for the town and us to put up, maybe over here by the firehouse, a video sign that we could put information out to the community for schools and town because we do things now by website but we do know there are people that don't use computers uh, we can't get hired for current to ever publish anything but if we had a video sign that can be changed from anyone's simple computer who's running it we could put town events up there town meetings anything we want that's coming up can post there and do that with shared services and that would be a sign that could be shared. Right now, the only sign is at the high school. It has to be physically, physically you have to lift a cover that's, that's bigger in area than one of these tables. The kids put it up, you put a stick there so it doesn't fall on you, and then they have to individually change every little letter so you know that sign doesn't get changed very often unless something big is happening. I think it's a safety issue, and I think the community would like to be able to get information out. And I drive around different towns and see all these video signs and say, you know, Booster Club this night or town meeting this night, just put something up there that people would know where it is and give some information that could be used by everybody in the town. And uh, maybe uh, Jim would be one to kick in or something, and we could kick in and put it here by the firehouse, which seems to be a main area. I just want to throw that out if it's worth bringing up to shared services, but it would be something in a five year plan. It's about a 15, probably $15,000 item. Kind of like, looks like we're looking for ways to spend money now. Well, that mean, doesn't, it might not be a yeah, bad idea, but I think it's, I think it sounds, like, it sounds like a good idea, but to me, it sounds like it would be the town that would be doing that. Well, the and town, but would, I think we want to we would communicate be, you know, too. We are we we are part of the same community, and so you know the town. I think I think that that's something the town should consider doing. And part of what they would be conveying is information regarding our district. That's all. That that would be my take. Well, then I would ask. Maybe, it's definitely cap. It's a capital yeah. expenditure, but I don't think well, it's we'll a capital it, expenditure sure, right? for us yeah. to undertake. Okay. Well, it would benefit the schools because the schools would probably use it most. And well, and I mean, I really... It, unless you want to look at it the other way, which is instead of the marquee board that we have... I consider a safety and issue. And just, re, you know, and then putting in a capital request to replace the current marquee board out in front of the high school, middle school with an electronic board. And that would be, that would be a board of education district right. expense and it would be a board of education district. And I thought of that, but I like the yeah. sharing idea. Oh, I do too. And I thought the center of town may be a more appropriate spot, but you're right, John. And then I think it's then I think it's a town expense. Yeah. That's why that's how I would take it. Okay. Whatever. I mean, regardless of that decision, I'm really close to having them not change that board. Um, it, I've done it before. Mm -hmm. It is very heavy, and you know I don't want to wait for an accident. I'm going to show you that Thursday when we're down there. Um, We'll look at the board. You know, and they go in bad weather, it's snow, so they're tromping through snow and trying to lift it up. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm. I just wouldn't want to see someone like. That seems like rain, right. I think. No, I'm yeah, no, something's going to fall on somebody. You know, so regardless of what they decide, I'm not sure that it's the best move to continue with our board down there anyway. That's just mm -hmm. kind of a side conversation. Okay. I just want to bring that up because well, I think if, that's an item down the road. If, if, you really, if you really feel that way, then it's something that we should be thinking about as a capital expenditure for the district. I, I do feel that way. I just like the idea of sharing it, that if we did it with the town, we'd both be using it. You're right, John, that if we do it, we're going to do it, but then it's going to be pretty much just school stuff on there. I would think it would be nice to have the town right, it's gonna, use it. If it's going to park and rec, put something that could on have there. Parks and so rec I was just thinking of sharing something that we could all be involved I, with. I, I agree with you 100%. You know, you go through Bloomfield, yeah, and they have a, they have, it's green. It's nice, it's soothing on the eye. Okay. The other thing I can look into is, you know, sometimes the graduating classes are looking for a way of a kind of a donation to make to the school. Ah. Um, so I can see if there's um, the last few graduating classes. I don't recall, um, you know, anything, but if there's something they're looking for, that might not be, that might be a nice thing too, because then they can put, you know. That would be a real legacy thing of, for their class. You know, the following yeah. class. Like we have the bench out front and some of those things, but. Gift of the class of, right. yeah. Right. Oh, I was suggesting we just bring it up maybe at the next Board of Finance meeting with the Board of Selectmen there and say, hey, what do you think about sharing? Yeah, a sign like some that discussion, that's all. In, in the future years. 
if there's a lean year. I don't think there's going to be too many lean years coming up. Okay, 22-23. We, we done with this, son? Yeah. Because yes. I went off tangent bringing the sign up. Okay, 23-24. So we want to leave it for now. Nothing big, Missy, that you can think of? I just, I know the Board of Finance just doesn't want to surprise. No, everything that we've looked at right now is, you know, it's not that major item. It's a kind of a, a grouping of particular items. Okay. Then we're going to present, this is our second plan. We'll present to them next week. Can I get a motion to approve it? Because the Board of Finance is going to ask that the Board of it approve it. So moved. Do I have a second? I second. Oh. <laughs> any, more, any more discussion? <laughs> get you into the record. Yeah. With, with all the proposals and all the changes? Yes. Uh, so Lisa some. has all that written out. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Okay, thank you everyone. Let's see, what are we doing? Okay. Where do I go with my agenda? Did you take my agenda? No, no, oh. oh, it's mine. Well, mine's gotta be here somewhere. Okay, there next is. item is mine. Paid superintendent search. Okay, so we have next uh, next Tuesday, remember we, we have a board of finance meeting next week and I think Bob said he was gonna sit in for me because I said I'm away in Iceland next week. We said that we'll give our five year plan. Uh, but the thing is here, we're looking, Mary was looking to do a board of ed focus group because figured that some of us are going to the board of finance meeting was looking to do one at 5.30. What date? Next Tuesday, is that the 22nd? 22nd. Next Tuesday? Oh, yeah, 22nd, that's right. And then she was gonna do a Board of Finance and Board of Selectmen focus group at 6.30. And then there is a community one that was scheduled for 7.30. Uh, there is an open house at the high school that night, which can run past 7.30. They're actually, they, they um, changed the times so will be done at 7.20. It will be oh, 7.20, mm -hmm. okay. Because I, I did receive an email today of someone said there was something else going on uh, that night as well. So I was wondering whether Mary can do another one or not. So if, if the high school is gonna be done at 7.30, then that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, actually 7.20, 7.20, so that way the community one could be at 7.30. And where's that one located? Is that the community center? You were just talking about you're still talking about October 22nd? 22nd, yeah, the community one. The community one is the 29th. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I wanted <laughs> one. Like, I, I wanted to be clear on I'm that. I'm sorry. That's right. I wanted the community to make. The community one is the 29th, along with the open oh, house that you're she's right. just mentioned. I got the open house at the wrong, the wrong night. October 22nd is a board of finance meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My correction. I'm, that's sorry. Why I'm sorry. Lisa, the, the 29th. Is the community focus groups with so Mayor Broderick. At 7.30 on October 29th. And I was going to ask her, and I did ask her in an email today whether we could do another one. And she did mention back to me, that's why I think I wrote 730 community of doing it that night. That would then be a second community forum. And Lisa and I weren't sure whether our contract called for one or two or whether there was any number on it. But the question is, and I'll share with the board because I've been back and forth with Mark, their focus group is going to be 6.30. For some reason, and I'll talk with Christine tomorrow, they, they think we should be posting it, but it's really not our meeting, and we're not looking to be there, and I'm going to be in Iceland. Uh, I would like a representative from the board to at least be there to introduce Mary, but this is really a board of finance meeting, and for her to do a focus group. This is on the 29th, that. not on the 22nd. No, we're back to the 22nd. Their right. meeting's the 22nd. So our I'm board of really ed, you guys are going to do a 5.30 focus group. On the 22nd. Which is 5.30 here. Next where, Tuesday. Where is it going to be held? Do we have a location for it? We could probably do that in the boardroom, right? 
On the 22nd? It's just for the Board of Ed. Will that be enough? We don't have that. Because we're not putting that out to the public. We make a right. nice it's just the boards. So oh, it's not a that would be just people. That would be just the board. So we could do that the board office would be available then. And that will be posted. Right. The third so select. Okay, so that's it's the twenty second. That's the twenty second. I'm getting confused. So this is not five, to be confused with the, all yeah, the stuff that's going the on. Yeah, that's five thirty for the final. Right. Right. Okay, six thirty. Okay. I'm sorry. Can we, can we, can we, can let's we'll start from the top. Let's start from the top. Five thirty. Board of Education focus group. October twenty two. October twenty two, and we can do that in the boardroom. Okay. Okay. It's next Tuesday. And then, so what's all the 29th stuff again? And then we're we'll looking the We're still on the 22nd. Still still on right. the 22nd. At 6.30, yeah. she wanted to do it with the Board of Finance and Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Now, with us, it's a non-meeting because it's part of the superintendent search. With the Board of Finance and Board of Selectmen, it's going to be a meeting. But they asked us to post it, but it's really not our meeting. I'm going to ask them to post it and you know, whether they want to record it or not, Mary would prefer not to re be recorded because people are more f free willing to talk if it's not being recorded. But that's up to them. If they want to do that, they could. And that's only, the be here? only the Board of Ed can choose not to be recorded and do it in private because it's a superintendent search and not a meeting. The Board of Finance, if they've got a quorum, then it's a meeting. But help me. I mean, why would we call the meeting? We're not going to have a quorum there. I would think it's their meeting, correct? Right. That they I would, would think that they would need to call their meeting, and they could begin it at six thirty. And it's going to be here. Or did they agree? And to that's that? going to be that's going to be here. They've got it scheduled for the conference room next door. Okay, so that's next Tuesday. The little room for, for the entire board, board of finance. finance. Well, they're not. There's only the think four or five board of finance members said they're coming. Okay. So yeah, because and I saw the select. emails coming back to Mark. Well, I know, but still, that's easy. And the three selectmen, if they come. All right, there. so it's in the conference room. Okay. Okay. And it actually, they may even do it here because I don't think there's not a meeting here until they meet here at 730. Okay. The reason we picked that night was some of us are going to be there. Right. The board of selectmen are going to be there. We just thought we could do it all in one night. I really think they would just have it here and not be recorded, but whatever. Well, they could have it in here then, just not be recorded, but that's up to them. Okay. okay. Now, October 29th, that's when the open house is at the high school, which is fine. And Mary's going to have a 7.30 uh, forum. I could be here for that one. 7.30? 7.30. Where's that going to be? She's going to have a focus group with the community. So that's in the auditorium at the high no, school? No, that's going to be in the community center, right, Lisa? Yes. Mm -hmm. that's what we, don't want to do. we don't want to do them in the schools. Okay. Mary just wanted to mm -hmm. keep people but people feel more comfortable not bringing them to the schools. So October 29th, 7.30, we don't have to go to that. I'll be there, uh, that's for the community. And then also there's a letter that's gone out, if you haven't seen it yet, it's, go it's been going out to everybody in the community on Facebook. There's also a survey that everyone in the community can do. There's a, it can only be done on a web. It's one of these- uh, Survey monkey. Survey monkey, so we can't hand it out to someone, uh, but it is, available so that more people can participate without actually coming to a focus group. They can they can do the survey or they can do the focus group and do the survey. So how can how can people access this survey? It's on it's live on our website. It's uh, supposed to be on the town's website. I haven't checked that. I know it's on ours. And I had seen in print in our letter that there was going to be a link to it on Facebook. I haven't checked that on the East Granby page. East Granby community. I didn't think it was on the East Granby community page yet. It may have been though. Is there any way to make sure that people only do it once, or can somebody just go? I ahead think you can only do it once unless you have multiple email addresses. I would imagine then you could do it more than once. But otherwise, the survey is once. That's why Survey Monkey works. So they get one from each email. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Once you, once you, want it. Once you fill it out, you're done. And again, with the, the only other caveat is we may add another community meeting, but it seems like now if the high school is going to be done on time, uh, we may not have to do that, but we'll see. We'd like to get as many people as possible. I mean, we're, we're paying for the service, and I'd like to be able to utilize it as much as we can and make it available to everyone. Okay, and then you know Mary will come back to us in November with a superintendent profile of characteristics and qualities that community is looking for, then we'll have to make decisions of what we're going to be doing. Okay, any questions on the CABE superintendent search? 
Okay, then I'll move to superintendent's report. Hey, Bob, I'm sorry, it's not related, but it's sort of related. And again, since we've got scheduling in mind, we're okay, throwing out dates and, and times and whatnot. And oh, no, I'm sorry, I'll wait till the committee report. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yes. All right. Billy Harry did my report. I forgot I haven't done it yet. <laughs> All right. So, um, as a board, you already had the, the pleasure of uh, meeting Ray, but I wanted to. Uh, introduce him uh, in, in the public forum and Ray was kind enough to spend the day with us today in the evening. So um, again, this is Ray Engel, who is our new business manager. Um, Ray will begin with us full time on November 4th, 4th, which is, uh, which is a Monday. Uh, for the month of October, uh, he has, he will be spending one day a week with us and working uh, with Joanne, which has been uh, very helpful. I think for Ray, for Joanne, uh, for all of us. Um, and uh, Ray comes with us for, from a variety of backgrounds and uh, most recently as a uh, school business official. Um, and we are really happy uh, to have Ray on board. Thank you. Welcome. 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 Glad to have you. Glad to have you five days a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like five today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, also, I would like to share uh, some school activities and happenings that have been going on. Um, I'm going to have a coffee and conversation next Tuesday morning from uh, 7.30 to 9 a.m. So I'll, we're going to send an email blast out uh, tomorrow. Uh, if you recall, I had an open house last month, so I figure I will alternate kind of the evening and the morning. So if people wanted to kind of stop by, ask questions, talk about the schools, um, you know, I'll be available for that. So that again will be next Tuesday, uh, 7.30 to 9 in the board conference room. Uh, let's see, Seymour School. On Friday, October 4th, Seymour Elementary School presented the play, The Prince and the Pauper to a packed house at the East Granby High School Auditorium. The play, which was produced with the help of Children's Stage Adventures and various generous support of the Seymour and Allgrove PTO, was the culmination of just one week of intensive rehearsals and theater workshops. More than half of all Seymour students appeared in the play and participated in the workshops. It was an outstanding performance and a wonderful display of the amazing talents of our students and staff. I was, I was at that performance, oh, and, and I was involved with plays before. I was totally amazed that in less than a week, yeah. they came on Monday, yeah. and they produced this play on Friday night. I've seen, I spent months on plays, and I couldn't believe how, how well it went off. Yeah. Really good job. And I believe it's something they engage in every other year um, that yeah. they've been oh, doing okay. it. So. I've, I've run into some Seymour kids, and every one of them just still just bubbling mm -hmm. from it. Um, and also, I'd just say that um, my son participated in it in his year at Seymour, and um, he's now been to 10 Broadway shows in the last 16 months, so I am blaming them, <laughs> and I'm going to be potentially seeking damages. <laughs> and I also believe that I think any child interested in performing, you know, gets a part of some sort. Yes. So everybody, everybody, nice. everybody gets a part in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a, a line, whether it's the chorus, um, whether it's a dance, yeah. whether it's just, you know, being a part of the ensemble. It's absolutely one of the best things that, that, that happens at Seymour. And, and the pride that these kids have is you drive around town and you see the, the Seymour actor lives here sign, you know, it just, it speaks volumes yeah. for, for the program that these uh, people bring to our school, but also for um, our district that we continue it and we understand the importance of it. So I think it's wonderful. Great. Uh, Eric Pino, one of our high school students who plays on the East Granby Windsor Lock Suffield Co-op um, football team, was named Hartford Current Athlete of the Week, uh, yes. it was last week. Yeah. Um, this is the first time we've ever had a Hartford Current Athlete of the Week, I believe. I know in one week he scored four touchdowns, but I read again he scored four touchdowns. Scored another four. Yeah, and, so, uh, yeah. and I, I think he might be on his third 
set of four or something like that. So um, Eric is a, a you know wonderful wonderful kid and a very um, you know well deserving of that award. Uh, breast cancer awareness. Our two students um, spoke briefly about that, so I will just reiterate that the boys and girls soccer teams will be wearing pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, October 16th, which is tomorrow, and October 18th, which is Friday, for two home soccer games. Uh, they are also doing an East Granby Middle School Sports Mob, and that's when um, students from the middle school stay after school and make posters for the athletes and uh, go out to the field and cheer them on. And we've always had a, a large number of middle school students who turn out for that. So they'll be doing that both uh, the home games for girls and boys. Uh, the soccer teams will be taking optional donations uh, uh, towards their breast cancer awareness campaign. The middle school student council has decided to match all donations, plus I believe it's $20 for every um, goal scored by an East uh, Granby High School um, athlete uh, for those two games. So if you want to see some soccer, come on out tomorrow or Friday, two home games, 345. Uh, you also heard Soccer Under the Lights next Friday evening. Um, we have a 6 p.m. game and an 8 p.m. game. The games are against Bolton High School. Next Thursday night, we do have the bonfire and the pep rally. And again, as you heard, the high school open house, if you recall, we had to um, postpone it the first time around due to the roof project. So we have rescheduled it. Uh, Mr. DeMello rescheduled it for the 29th. It literally came at the same time that we were confirming the community conversations. So um, Tony moved the um, uh, final time for 720, so parents can certainly um, move on over to at the community center for that forum. I see um, the bonfire, where is that? That is held behind the high school. And we have, um, you know, fire marshal comes out prior, checks it, they're on site. Um, okay. Yes. Every fireman in town is there. Yes. Uh, let's see, and that's what I have for school activities and that is my report. Um, I do. Um, yes. Do we have that for approval, or let me know? Check some of your report. Yeah, I'm yeah it's for approval down below. Yeah. Okay. So just give us Want me to speak to it right now? Yeah. Okay. Nice approval, yeah. Sure. Um, Connecticut State Department of Education Child Nutrition Program. Um, that's what we participated for a free milk program. Requires board approval um, and the board secretary signature authorizing um, that me and Joanne Segan um, are able to be signers for claim reimbursement uh, for the milk program. So we can uh, have a motion later on, but so Lucia will need your signature as well as uh, mine and Joanne's for that. And we will probably, we will need to do this again once Ray is on board, um, like in another, another month. So when do you need to have it signed tonight? Uh, time would be preferable, yeah. I believe we have the papers here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Missy. Okay, committee reports. Anything new on policy? Okay, budget I think we've covered. Unless someone has something new. Anything new on curriculum? Yes, there is. Uh, what you have? Uh, Marjorie Light and I uh, had a meeting the other day. Uh, and she talked about some of the things that were going on. Uh, they, Speaking of um, shared services, they had a uh, collaborative uh, professional development with uh, uh, Suffield, and uh, I guess it went really well. The teachers uh, um, really enjoyed it. They did a whole lot of things. I mean, I have it all written out in front of me, but uh, um, so it was, uh, they had, uh, or the, um, it's going to be a full day PD in November when it comes up, uh, when they have that. Um, and uh, so they're going to have uh, 30 workshops that the, that or 30 uh, sessions that they're going to attend uh, in align with the state's uh, standards and our district's goals. Um, uh, the, the, the range of topics are included include but not uh, limited to mastery and project-based learning, social emotional learning, 
assessments, reading, writing, workshop, technology, and various discipline specific titles. Uh, and so then at the end of the day, they will uh, gather with their uh, um, colleagues and uh, debrief and share best practices with round table discussions. Um, they, uh, the, the K-5 classroom teachers from Suffield are slated to have a, a teacher's college immersion day and ours uh, uh, will be staying uh, uh, at, uh, in East Granby to work on public schools. That's actually related to something else. Um, the reading writing workshop, uh, they, we partner with the teacher's college down in, um, in New York and um, they, have, uh, they usually have a, a uh, consult a cons consultant uh, for uh, don't they have it for K through two and also three to through five? They used to yes. Yeah, and I guess that they didn't have the one for three to five this year because well they don't have one. Uh, so uh, they end up uh, uh, they're going to be doing it in house because uh, I guess Susan Cavanaugh mm -hmm. is uh, is uh, well versed in it having uh, gone through it before and so. Uh, they are uh, the Seymour teachers are, are, are going to be doing it uh, uh, by themselves this year, essentially, right? And I correct yes. in that. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, uh, talking about uh, the, uh, we're aligning our, our social studies uh, frameworks uh, to um, to the states, I guess, moving forward and. Uh, 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 the K2 uh, building, that is to say, All Grove had a project-based learning, a professional development last year. While the three fourth grades will be training this fall, we plan on completing the K through five continuum in uh, social studies curriculum by the spring, which includes incorporation of standards and benchmarks into inquiry-based uh, learning units. I believe that uh, uh, they had already done the. Um, the, the math and language arts, and now they're doing social studies, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, and uh, uh, NEASC accredit accreditation is coming up. Uh, so that's uh, coming up this year, is it not? Uh, no, not this year. Okay. All right. Spring of 21, I believe. But you guys are ramping up for that. Yeah, so there's a self-study that occurs um, up to two years ahead of time. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. We went through it at a Bay Path a couple of years ago, and I remember it was just... You know, yes, yeah, so. it is a big undertaking. Yeah, okay. So that's what uh, Marjorie uh, relayed to me, and I'm relaying it to you. Thank you, Bob. You're very welcome. Hey, facilities, John? Well, we have a meeting scheduled for Thursday morning at 8 a.m. in the uh, Board of Ed Conference Room. We'll be meeting with the FNF uh, representative, who I guess will let us fill us in on how the systems are functioning in the schools. And I'm hoping he'll tell us if they need any maintenance, he'll spell that out for us. And I guess we were supposed to walk to see the tennis course, but I think Thursday morning is going to be pretty much a month soon. At least Wednesday night is. I don't know if Thursday morning. Oh, I think it's going to start raining tomorrow. It's so long since it's rained. I forgot it's supposed, what that to be a supposed to have a massive rainstorm massive Wednesday rainstorm. night. Well, we'll see what it's. But we'll see. It's raining. We'll see. We'll hit the tennis courts and with the sign down below on our way out. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it'll be windy at least. Okay. Good. Uh, negotiations. Uh, I have October 30th, 5 p.m. for teachers. Anyone have anything different than that? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so dates I have um, the 21st at 4 o'clock of October. October. Yeah. Yeah. Is that still on? I'm deferring to. Um, I'm sorry. Tell me that date. The yeah. chairman. October 21. Yeah. 4 p.m. I thought when I we had I had the, the last note I took at when we were last with Kyle. It was nine uh, 10 21 at four o'clock, non certs. Yeah. yeah that coming back right. to the table with that us. Right. And we you know it was back and forth between four o'clock and six thirty and well I think that four o'clock one. Well. And then was trying for five, but I think yeah, it defaulted. To but four. then I think it defaulted to four. But yeah. Um, and then the teachers, we have 1028, I believe, at 530, and I think that was... Before our meeting. That's, um, yeah, and that's that's not a meet and greet. That's just, I believe, a continuation of the uh, of the board and uh, the board and the uh, meeting with, uh, with our attorney. 
Because I got an email from Kyle showing the 30 at the 5 o'clock for teachers. Well, I have that date too, and then I have 11.6 at 5, and I have 11.14 at 5, yep. 11.25 at 4, and those were just all dates that, right. that well, we threw out a lot of dates. were so thrown we're, out. But yeah. it was not confirmed. So yeah. did Kyle confirm October 21? Let me look. October 21, I believe, is confirmed with a non certified. Right. Okay. And then the 28th is con confirmed because that was well, just, that's just us. just us before. Right. Okay. And the 30th, you said, is also confirmed? Bob, is there any way you can, like, find all this down and shoot us all an email so that we can write it on our calendar? Yeah, I, I've got to get, I gotta yeah. get these things in. Just confirm things. Even the 21st, is it at 4 p.m. or has. Has it been moved? No, I think that's at 4 p.m. because that's the non search and they okay. wanted they want to do it after. So. Right now, okay. As confirmed as anything can be. Yeah, we'll get an email out to everyone on the dates because they are getting confusing now, which ones are which. Right, and it's piling up with the other meetings. and the Yeah, we did give more dates, and I know Kyle sent some emails to Missy and me, and we'll make sure we get them squared away for you. There's very few evenings open. Yeah. In October. Yeah, October is busy. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, we'll look at those and get those out to you. Okay, anyone on communications? Right, the only thing is if you can help communicate about the uh, focus groups we're having for the community and uh, certainly spread the word about the survey online. Anything you have? No, I mean, just if there's something that, you know, I can communicate better or something you would like me to do, um, you know, on behalf of the board, I'm happy to do so. I did start um, a Twitter feed, uh, which is kind of a, a quick way to get some quick photos out and messages out to um, any Twitter followers. But if you are not on Twitter, the live feed is on the Board of Ed website. So you don't even have to have a, a Twitter account. You can just go to the Board of Education and look at the bottom and you can see everything that's posted. Um, the idea is really just to kind of give some, um, um, you know, kind of actual, literally pictures into the school day. I've been um, trying to schedule once a week or once every other week to start off in the, in the different schools and uh, kind of walk around and, and be in classrooms and, you know, celebrate all the great stuff that's, that's happening. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, well, just one other thing is that uh, this isn't under communication so much as under shared services. Uh, uh, Lucia and I will try to pin down, uh, you know, Jim to see if when we're going to have another shared services meeting. Yeah, we need to. Very good. Okay, recommended actions. We've done 6A already. 6B, need a motion to approve the child nutrition program authorized signatures. So moved. There's a second. John, the second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Okay, agenda items for future meetings. There's going to be a presentation October 28th on student performance data. Okay. Any other agenda yeah. items from the board? Okay, comments from visitors. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Glad you Always good to see you, Bill. Ray, you're still here with us, right? Still here. Good, good. Tough to get rid of. You can go now. You can go on any time, actually. Okay. Motion so the motion adjourned. for adjournment. John with the motion. We have a second. Yeah, second. John with a second. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming.